Shalom Israel, most high Christ bless you all, most high Christ bless, happy Sabbath, how you all doing? Amen. Amen. Praise to the most high. Brothers, y'all alright, right? right? Amen. Amen. Sisters, y'all okay? Okay, Blink twice if you understand. <laughs> no, I'm good to say. Um... Who's reading? We're going to do a lot of reading today. You want it to? Okay, thank you. There's going to be a lot of reading today. Um, the only reason uh, we're going to even do class, uh, this is the only time we're able to address certain matters, is during that afternoon class. Um, I know Deacon Malachi is going to bring out some real heavy stuff and acts, but there's some, there's some issues that we always have to keep at the forefront of our minds in the congregations, okay? Uh, last week I was in Orlando dealing with some water. <laughs> Some holy water being sprinkled on people. Um, and I was supposed to come to South Carolina a few weeks back, but been doing some traveling. All praises to the Most High. Um, so let's open up. The book of First Ezra, chapter 3, verse 1. Again, we're going to do a lot of reading. A lot of reading. You're definitely going to get your four chapters in today. <laughs> Can I get an amen? <laughs> ah, boy. We're going to start at verse 1 to verse 12. First Ezra chapter. First Ezra chapter 3 verse 1. Book of First Edris, chapter 3 and verse 1. Now, when Darius reigned, he made a great feast unto all his subjects, and unto all his household, and unto all the princes of Media and Persia, and to all the governors and captains and lieutenants that were under him, from India unto Ethiopia, of an hundred twenty and seven provinces. When so, it, so Darius was the king of Media. The king of Media. Cyrus was the king of Persia. Darius was the king of Media. Go ahead. When they had eaten and drunken and being satisfied were gone home. Then Darius the king went into his bedchamber and slept. And soon after awake. Then three young men that were of the guard that kept the king's body spake one to another. Let every one of us speak a sentence. He that shall overcome. And whose sentence shall seem wiser than the others, unto him shall the king Darius give great gifts and great things in token of victory. As to be clothed in purple, to drink in gold, and to sleep upon gold, and a chariot with bridles of gold, and an head tire of fine linen, and a chain about his neck. And he shall sit next to Darius because of his wisdom, and shall be called Darius his cousin. So now, what the, what the young men... The guards of the king. That was that was the secret service. The media's secret service right here. Three young men that were guarding Darius, right? They had a discussion. They said, whoever of us has the wisest sentence, Darius is going to give us many gifts, call us his cousins. We're going to sit in a prominent position. Everybody understand that? Good. And then everyone wrote his sentence sealed it and laid it under King Darius his pillow uh -huh. and said that when the king is risen some will give him the writings and of whose side the king and the three princes of Persia shall judge that his sentence is the wisest to him shall the victory be given as was appointed the first wrote wine is the strongest so the first brother as he thought in his divine level of wisdom he said, the strength is in wine. Huh. Go ahead. The second wrote, 
The king is strongest. It says out of out of between the two, the second row, you know what? Who has the ultimate power over man? It's the king. Go ahead. The third wrote, women are strongest. Hmm. But, a, but above all things, truth beareth away the victory. So it says, the third says, women are the strongest. But read that bottom part again. But above all things, truth beareth away the victory. It says, but of all the things that we listed, the truth is going to prevail. The truth is going to uh, lead the way. And one of these three is the truth. Make sense so far? Continue to read. Now when the king was risen up, they took their writings and delivered them unto him. And so he read them. And sending forth, he called all the princes of Persia and Media, and the governors and the captains and the lieutenants and the chief officers. And sat him down in the royal seat of judgment. And the writings were read before them. So all of these prominent men of status, princes, governors, captains, men of renown in the media captivity, in the media uh, government, in the media kingdom, right? They all came together and they sat in the judgment seat in the sense of to judge matters between who? Those three men, their writings, he called them together. Listen, I want all you wise and prominent men to hear these guys writing, writings. And I want you to judge which is the wisest of them all. Go ahead. And he said, call the young men and they shall declare their own sentences. So they were called and came in. And he said unto them, declare unto us your mind concerning the writings. Now, this is very important. Verse 17 says, declare unto us your mind according to the writing. He said, you know what they said? What kind of spirit were you in to write what you wrote? What was on your mind when you wrote it? We want to know that. Sometimes we have to understand that when we do say and think things, we're in a certain spirit. Can you agree? Yes? No? Maybe so? Maybe one day. Read that verse again, verse 17. Verse 17. And he said, uh, he said unto them, Declare unto us your mind concerning the writings. Then began the first who had spoken of the strength of wine. So real quick, Luke 9 and 51. We're going to come back here. Luke chapter 9, verse 51. Because I made a comment. And some may say, hey, I just say what I want to say. But when you say something, there is a spirit behind what you say. I want verse 51 to verse 55. It's the book of Luke, chapter 9, verse 51. And it came to pass, when the time was come that he should be received up, he steadfastly set his face to go to Jerusalem and sent messengers before his face. And they went and entered into a village of the Samaritans to make ready for him. And they did not receive him. So in the city of the Samaritans, they did not openly receive him as Christ had been received in other places because the Samaritans didn't think that that was open to them. Christ's deliverance was open to them. So they didn't receive him like everyone else did initially. Go ahead. And they did not receive him because his face was as though he would go to Jerusalem. As if he didn't want to deal with the city of Samaria. He had, the, he had the, the disposition as if he only wanted to go deal with Jerusalem. So they were like, he's, he's not here for us. Let's, why, are we even, why are we receiving him and making a big deal? Go ahead. And when his disciples, James and John, saw this, they said, Lord, would thou that we command fire to come down from heaven and consume them even as Elias did? So now, remember, the Samaritans, what nation are they? What nation are they? The nation of Israel. Not what tribe are they? I didn't ask tribe. I said what nation? So Samaritans are, you're correct. They are the tribe of Ephraim. That Samaria is the capital of Ephraim. Is everybody aware of that? Anybody unaware of that? Raise your hand. It's in what, Isaiah 7? Isaiah 9, thank you. 7 and 9, thank you. So let's keep reading. Read that again, verse 54. The book of Luke, chapter 9 and verse 54. And when his disciples, James and John, saw this, 
They said, Lord, mm -hmm. would thou that we command fire to come down from heaven and consume them even as Elias did? Mm -hmm. But he turned and rebuked them and said, you know not what manner of spirit ye are of. So why did Christ say that? Because of what was said. Y'all understand that? Sometimes we say things not knowing what type of spirit we're in. We have to know what spirit is behind you pushing whatever agenda you are uh, verbalizing. Does everybody understand that? You have to know if what you're saying is of God or of Satan. That's how I can, that's the easiest way to sum it up. Is what I'm going to say or I, what, or what I said, is it of God or is it of Satan? You have to know what man of spirit you're in because guess what Christ, why did Christ rebuke them? They wanted to kill their own people. You see the point? Christ like, listen, no, 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 no. You ain't in the right spirit. So he rebuked them. The same way our people here will, won't let little discrepancies, little odds you may have against each other roll off your back. We make it a big issue, right? But in the world, when you playing dozens with your with your with your with your folks on the block, when Big Mama come come by talking about you, talking about your old big waterhead. Oh, Mama never called y'all a big waterhead. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Call you meathead, whatever the case may be. You just let that roll off your back. I dare someone in this truth to say that to you. Oh, you gonna call for hellfire and brimstone? We got it all backwards. We have it all backwards. Read that, read that bottom part again. But he turned and rebuked them and said, ye know not what manner of spirit ye are of. So you don't know what kind of ma manner of spirit you're in. So here's what you have to do. Give me that in um, Corinthians 13 and 5. Here's something that you have to know. It's the book of 2 Corinthians, chapter 13 and verse 5. Come on. Examine yourselves, whether ye be in the faith. Prove your own selves. Know ye not your own selves, how that Jesus Christ is in you, except ye be reprobates. So now, except if you be void of understanding. Here's what happens. Many of you, many of us, don't really know ourselves in this truth. The only way you get to know yourself is when the new you is tested. Make sense? Because guess what? In the world, you had that high tolerance level where you can deal with people no matter the insults, no matter what. Now, according to the Bible, you're a new creature, aren't you? So are you battle tested the way the old you was battle tested? No, you're not. You're not. You don't know what's going to trigger you because you're, you're a new person. It has to be battle tested. You have to be put in that position to know how you're going to deal. Am I now operating in the spirit of Christ or am I operating in the spirit of Satan? Makes sense, right? Huh. Let's go to Matthew chapter 12 and verse 34. Matthew chapter 12 and verse 34. It's the book of Matthew chapter 12 and verse 34. Come on. O generation of vipers, how can ye being evil speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. Now this is very, very important. If you have the devil on you, can you say good things? Hmm? Huh? Huh? Quiet. Hmm? Hmm? Huh? Hmm. Hmm. Read that again, please. The book of Matthew, chapter 12 and verse. And don't mind me. Y'all you, know I'm half crazy. Don't mind me. I was dropped on my head as a child. Something. I don't know. Go ahead. Read that again. It's the book of Matthew, chapter 12 and verse 34. Come on. Old generation of vipers. Now, who was Christ talking to here? mainly scribes, Pharisees, the elder, the chief priests, things of that nature, right? So he said, you're a generation of vipers, right? Y'all are crooked, 
forked tongue vipers. Go ahead. How can ye, being evil... He said, how can you, being in the spirit of Satan... Go ahead. Speak good things. Damn. Because you know what? A lot of times, things are said from an ingenuine or... Un, is it ungenuine or ingenuine? Ingenuine. Ingenuine place. And you're saying things that someone may want to hear... Or, or so, let me let me change that. You're saying things that you you're saying things that someone that may not be fully true, but you're just saying it to appease someone. Now let me say this: the omission of information is a lie. By definition, if you omit information, it is a lie, right? So what we do sometimes is we omit certain things, we change up stories, we do all type of crooked tongue things in order to whether manipulate, manipulate a situation, to get our way, to ease our way out before judgment comes, things of that nature. But God says, guess what? If your spirit is crooked where your mind is thinking about how to wiggle your way out of something, how to manipulate something, how to throw somebody under the bus, nothing good can come out of your mouth. So when we are, we as judges look at a matter, everything you're saying is digging you further and further into a hole. Y'all understand that? Because the spirit ain't right. The spirit ain't right. You can't hide that. A lot of times we try to hide that spirit. No, 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 no. That spirit is like, ta-da. Like, what's that, Mantan? Sambo? Ta-da. But your mouth is saying, no, I'm good. I'm, I'm keeping the laws of God. I'm great. But the spirit is like, and we see it. Please read that again. It's the book of Matthew, chapter 12, verse 34. O generation of vipers, how can ye, being evil, speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. So guess what? Brothers, if you have hatred for a brother, your mouth is going to tell how you feel. Sisters, if you have hatred for a sister, your mouth is going to say how you feel. Now, here's the thing. Your mouth may not say it to us, but your mouth will say it to your husband. Your mouth may not say it to us, brothers, but your mouth will say it to your, wife, to your wives. But nevertheless, it's revealed in the ears of God. Makes sense, right? Sometimes we forget there's a God up there listening or angels recording everything we do, everything we say. Okay. Keep playing with God. Surely he is not playing with you. Let's go back to First Ezra. It's the book of First Ezra, chapter three, verse seventeen. And he said unto them, "Declare unto us." Go, no, go to four and thirteen first. We're going to jump around a little bit. It's the book of First Ezra, chapter four, and verse thirteen. Then the third who had spoken of women. So let's let's jump ahead. So we read the first brother spoke about wine. The second brother spoke about the king. Very good. The third brother spoke about women. So let's go straight to it. Otherwise, we really will be reading four chapters today for real. <laughs> 4 and 13. Book of 1st Edges, chapter 4, verse 13. Then the third who had spoken of women and of the truth. Wait. You see, do you see the comparison there? It says spoken of women and of the truth. Hmm. Go ahead. This was Zerubbabel began to speak. O ye men, it is not the king great, it is not the great king, nor the multitude of men, neither is it wine that excelleth. Who is it then that ruleth them, or hath the lordship over them? Are they not women? Women have borne the king and all the people that bear rule by sea and land. Even of them came they, 
and they nourished them up that planted the vineyards from whence the wine cometh. These now, are- now, Zerubbabel went super deep. He went super deep. He said the, the wine that you mentioned isn't women who dress the vineyards and make sure that the vines are growing in the right way, the grapes get ripe, make the wine, put it all together. Isn't it women that do that? Like the grape get up and go hop into the, into the, into the press by itself and make his own wine and bottle itself. No, 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 no. Zerubbabel going super deep. He said even the king, doesn't he come out of a woman? This, this, is, this is a well thought out brother. Showing, remember, you're, when you say things, you're in a certain spirit. He's in the spirit of King Solomon right here. Because he's looking way deep into a matter. This is how we have to start examining certain things. Right? I'm going to give you an example. As I was talking to the officers in the room there, I gave an example. I said, uh, sometimes sisters will give excuses that they're staying home because they're sick. Right? When that sickness has gone from one Sabbath to two Sabbaths to three Sabbaths to four Sabbaths, you need to really find out what's the root of that sickness. Because the sickness didn't stop her from going to Walmart. Huh? 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 Did it? No. The sickness didn't stop her from from hanging out with other sisters or taking the kids to the park. But as soon as the Sabbath starts rolling around, some chronic illness pops up. Why is that? You don't know what manner of spirit you're in. You don't know. Because if you knew what spirit you were in, you wouldn't dare break the Lord's commandments. You wouldn't dare do it. So it tells you, number one, what spirit you're operating in. So as you begin to explain to your husband what your excuses are, you too are digging yourself further and further into a hole. Because your spirit is like this to him. Ta-da! But guess what? I'm going to hold that last thought. Keep reading. These also make garments for men. These bring glory unto men. And without women cannot men be. Now, what verse was that? 17. Verse 17. Very good. So that last verse 17, can you read it again? It's the book of 1 Edges, chapter 4, verse 17. Mm -hmm. These also make garments for men. These bring glory unto men. And without women cannot men be. The, The part that I want is the second to last part in that verse. It says... These bring glory unto men. Sisters, let me share something with you. Your job on this earth, if you are married, is to bring glory to your husband. Silence. Silence. I'm going to say it again. Let me say it again. Your role if you're married, is to bring glory to your husband. Brothers were scared the first go around. It was like, she looking at me. She looking. I ain't going to say nothing. I'm going to make my voice project like he said it. Roar it. I'm going to throw it. Your job is to bring glory to your husband. Sisters, do you understand that? Okay, six of them answered. We're going to get some more after the end of the day. All six of y'all. Jesus loves you. (laughs) Read, Read verse 17 again. These also make garments for men. These bring glory unto men. Not shame, but glory. Your job is to bring glory and not shame unto your husband. Read. And without women cannot men be. So let's go to Ecclesiasticus chapter 11, verse 1. Ecclesiasticus chapter 11 and verse 1. So your job is to bring glory and honor to your Lord. It's the book of Ecclesiasticus chapter 11 and verse 1. Mm -hmm. 
Wisdom lifted up the head of him that is of low degree mm -hmm. and maketh him to sit among great men. So now when we have, you know, I was in a room with officers of 20, 50, 60, 70, 80. These are these are these I, I see I see the brothers videos. These are great teachers in Israel, great readers in Israel, great laborers in Israel. It's the wisdom of the Lord that lift these men up. Can y'all sisters agree? Yeah, all 19 of y'all, all praises. We getting higher numbers, brothers. We getting up there. Jesus loves them. Wisdom lifts up these men because they know how to operate in the spirit of God. Make sense? Yes? So real quick, let's go to Proverbs 6 and 26. And we'll come back to Sirach. Proverbs 6, verse 26. The book of Proverbs, chapter 6 and verse 26. Come on. For by means of a whorish woman, a man is brought to a piece of bread. Mm -hmm. And the adulteress will hunt for the precious life. Now, read the top part of that verse again. For by means of a whorish woman, a man is brought to a piece of bread. Now, we know the context in which King Solomon wrote this. Right. He was going into the spirit of the way these heathen women deal. Stay away from them. They have this spirit on them. Right. But it's used in various ways because this is written. Is it written to the heathen? It's written to Israel. Correct. So some some synonyms for that first portion for by means of a whorish woman, a man is brought to a piece of bread. Synonyms for whorish is bad evil dishonorable and unvirtuous so sisters in the truth are striving to be virtuous women right but the bible says the whorish is also synonymous with being unvirtuous y'all understand that right a lot of times we sisters will say, oh, I'm not running around sleeping with a bunch of men and doing all kind of perverted things. That doesn't apply to me. Well, it actually does. Because what other type of whoredom is there in the Bible? That's what it's talking about, whoredom, right? There's physical whoredom and there's what? Really? So whoredom has multiple meanings as well. Y'all understand? So other words for it. Other synonyms for whorish, bad, evil, um, dishonorable, and unvirtuous. If sisters are striving to be virtuous women, don't fall into that category where you're unvirtuous. Or as it mentions here, whorish, right? Because there's physical whoredom and there's spiritual whoredom. So read the verse again. Now that we got that out the way, read that verse again. It's the book of Proverbs, chapter 6, verse 26. Come on. For by means of a whorish woman, a man is brought to a, pre a piece of bread. So by means of a bad woman, by means of an evil woman, by means, by means of a bad woman, by means of a evil woman, by means of a dishonorable woman by means of a unvirtuous woman a man can be brought to a piece of bread you know how they feed the pigeons in the park damn just tossing the brother on the ground to the pigeons that's some sad stuff but we just read how wisdom can lift them up to be above, uh, among great men didn't we just read that let's go back to Sirach. maybe some of y'all forgot already the book of Sirach, chapter 11, verse 1. Wisdom lifteth up the head of him that is of low degree. Mm -hmm. Because guess what? Why does it say of low degree? Because brothers was ex-drug dealers, ex-pimps, ex-damn, uh, 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 give me some more. So, what? What, what, what y'all scared to say it? Yeah, home, thank you. That brother. You said that with too much conviction, brother. Hallmongering, ex-church pastors robbing the people, so on. It, a bunch of filth. We were of low degree according to God. Correct? 
the wisdom that was poured on you when you heard this truth, you started applying the laws of God, God began to lift you up, right? Now we're mighty men. Brothers, listen, there's brothers in this truth that could run circles around Christian pastors. On Clubhouse, eventually, captains, we're going to stop talking. Just let brothers handle it. Run circles around these pastors. Huh. Read. And maketh him to sit among great men. And now that man who was in such filth in the world now sits among great men in the truth. Bishop knows their name. Deacons know their name. Have their number, talking on the phone, so on and so forth. You're now in the presence and um, acknowledgement, the camaraderie, the circle of great men. You can't tell me Bishop Nathaniel ain't one of these prophets back in the earth. I don't care what nobody say. So to be in the midst of this prophet, shoo, you around great men, man. Deacon Yaws, you around great men. And for them to know your name, I, I told brothers this joke recently. I remember, I think I was a 20. I went to New York, right? And I visited the school, and, I, and I'm walking up to the leadership stage, and one of the deacons, he goes, hey, it's Atlanta. <laughs> yes, he knew what state I was from, what city I was from. It don't take much to make me happy. But I, it, you know, the back of my like, he don't know my name. It's all right. Jesus, take the wheel. It's okay. It's okay. I ain't doing nothing. I'm nobody. But the mere, I was actually excited. He knew where I was from. I was like, oh, praises. That's a start. So it, it went from, hey, who's this brother to the city to point where I'm a captain, so on and so forth. So over time, you get to build relationships with these great men. And you should be honored by that. You should really, really be honored by that because these men are the prophets back in the earth today, without a doubt. I was in Christian church. I ain't learned a damn thing. So you got to know there's a difference among these men that are holding the Bible. The pastors hold the Bible, but they can't tell you anything about the Bible. Y'all understand that? So that's an honor. So now, jump to verse 6, though. The book of Sirach, chapter 11, verse 6. Many mighty men have been greatly disgraced. Damn. We just read that in Proverbs, chapter 6. Proverbs, chapter 6, said that uh, by means of a whorish woman, a man is brought to a piece of bread. So that same mighty man that was lifted up in Sirach 11, verse 1, when you get to verse 6, it says, many have been greatly disgraced. Go ahead. And the honorable delivered into other men's hands. And the honorable go into captivity, go into worshiping other gods, go off. That's what happens. Men who had honor go off. Huh. Let's go back to First Ezra, chapter 4, and it's verse 18. The book of First Edris, chapter 4, verse 18. Yea, and if men have gathered together gold and silver and any other goodly thing, do they not love a woman which is comely in favor and beauty? And letting all those things go, do they not gape and even with open mouth fix their eyes fast on her? And have not all men more desire unto her than unto silver or gold or any goodly thing whatsoever? This is very important. The verse says a man will, what they call a jaw dropping, will drop his jaw to gape at a woman. Like, wow, she's beautiful. And it says to the point where that man will actually forget his plight for riches in order to pursue that woman that, he, that his jaw dropped. You got to wonder, I, I always have these questions. Let's say in, in this celebrity world, right? Why do these men keep all dealing with the same woman? She go from one celebrity to another celebrity to another celebrity to another celebrity. And you're like, what is going on? Now, she's a beautiful sister, right? But it just, I filter it through the scriptures. It makes the scriptures true. These men are millionaires, billionaires even. And they always jumping on somebody's sloppy seconds. Why? Because of what it just said. He'll forget his position, his prominence, his riches because he wants her more than he wants his money. Huh. Go ahead. 
Verse 20. A man leaveth his own father that brought him up and his own country and cleaveth unto his wife. Mm -hmm. He sticketh not to spend his life with his wife and remembereth neither father nor mother nor country. By this also ye must know that women have dominion over you. Uh, so we're going to stop right there. We're going to stop right there. What I come to realize is there's something called suggestive questioning where the answer is actually going to get someone get their will done. Because it'll, let me give you an example of suggestive questioning. Don't you think we should do this when it's really your answer is not your answer? Because the suggestive questioning was, we should do this. And what men do is, you know what? We should go ahead and do such and such, like it was his idea. It was the suggestive questioning that your wife just posed to you. Brothers, don't fall for it. All right? Don't fall for it. The scripture says, read that line again in verse 22. By this also ye must know that women have dominion over you. You must know that women have that power. Don't be ignorant. Give me, give me that again. We just read it in uh, Corinthians 2 and 11. <sighs> Don't be ignorant. If you brothers want to chime in, don't be scared. It's all right. Your wife ain't going to pop your tires in the parking lot. Don't worry about it. You'll be all right. The book of Second Hey, security, watch the car, too. <laughs> Go ahead. The book of Second Corinthians, chapter 2, verse 11. Read. Lest Satan should get an advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. Don't be ignorant if your Satan, that Satan can take your wife. Now, I don't mean take her away as far as out the truth, but can use her in order to use you. Does that make sense? I know some of you brothers, y'all looking strong and got big beards and stuff like, no, nah, not me. Man, I've seen the mightiest men get turned to and fro like a, uh, uh, like a, like a rag doll by their wives. And not physically, spiritually spiritually she's showing she has dominion over you spiritually so i want to read that verse again 22 the book of first edges chapter 4 verse 22 by this also ye must know that women have dominion over you do ye not labor and toil and give and bring all to the woman so now we understand all them long hours you put in on a job it's just to make sure that she has what she needs, right? Let's be honest. Brothers, all we need is a blow-up mattress, a, a damn reclining couch, and some food in the fridge, and a TV. Am I, am I lying? Am I lying? That's all we need. But guess what? I guarantee I go to some of y'all houses, that thing decked out, man. <laughs> Ooh, you got all kind of chandeliers. Brothers can't spell chandelier. You know that ain't you. Decked out. And I'm not, I'm not saying there's, there's any sin in that. No, I'm just making fun. There's, there's no sin in that. It's fine. Sometimes the sisters want something to do. That's fine. They want to beautify the home. That's their job. Okay? That's the ordering of the house. She should make the house comfortable, clean, pleasant, smelling. Like I like smelling good in the house when I walk in. It shouldn't smell like a damn, uh, pardon me, little babies. Like, like yeah, like, some de like a fish, dead fish farm. Nah. Had a the carpet vacuumed. And, you know, it should look nice. It's all right. But what I'm saying is, brothers, we live simple. We don't need any of that stuff. So we, the scripture is true. The reason why your house decked out is because there was some suggestive questioning that went on in your house. Don't you think a new couch set would look nice right here? You know what? It would look nice right there, wouldn't it? 
Come on, we know that. We can't be ignorant. We can't know Deuteronomy 28 and then be ignorant to this. All of this is for our learning. All of this is for our benefit. It's for us to learn. So now you can look at the questions coming with, with more uh, scrutiny now. You can be more aware of how the questions come. Now, trust me, they're listening too. So they're going to change it around a little bit. They're to the, look, see, they know. Okay, we, okay sis, they texting each other right now. Sister, we got to tweak the questioning because they on to us. They on to us. It's all right. <laughs> it's all right. We know. We know. Brothers, we, trust me. We Give me a recliner, a blow-up mattress, some food in the fridge, and my TV and my fire stick. That's a that's a man's dream, right? And some and some silence, some quiet. We good. We good. Nah. All to, and every every two years she wanna change the furniture out. Cause this these colors don't go with the season. What in the hell? When the hell a couch gotta change with the season? Now you got you paying fifteen hundred dollars for a new couch every two years. Come on, man. I'm going somewhere else. Let me, let me stop. Uh, start at verse 23. Verse 23. Yay. Hey, can we turn on some air in here? It's getting hot. Or maybe it's the way his sister's staring at me. <laughs> turn, let me get some air. I'm sweating up here. The hell is this? The heat is on in the middle of the winter. Thank you. Go ahead, read. Sister's putting the pressure on me. I'm up here sweating. Sister, look the other way. Look away. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> The book of First Edris, chapter 4, verse 23. Come on. Yea, a man taketh his sword and goeth his way to rob and to steal mm -hmm. and sail upon the sea and upon rivers and looketh upon a lion and goeth in the darkness. And when he has stolen, spoiled, and robbed, he bringeth it to his love. Mm -hmm. Wherefore, a man loveth his wife better than father or mother. Yea, many there be that have run out of their wits for women. And become servants for their sakes. Now, that is very, very heavy. Because we read up in verse 22 that by, by this also ye must know that women have dominion over you. Now, I'm going to share something with you why the scripture says that. There are things that your wives know about you that no brother in this room knows about you. Even though we're together every week. Every feast day, we talk on the phone. There are things that your wives know about you that you don't even want to get out. Y'all understand that? And just that little bit of information, along with your admiration for her as your wife, she's able to control you to a degree. Now, the furniture is one thing. That's, that's one thing. That's not, there's no sin in that. As long, as long as you ain't buying the furniture on the Sabbath. If she tell you to buy, order this couch, and it's a Sabbath, she got the devil on her. Make sense? Yes? No? Maybe so? Y'all do know that's evil. Okay, because y'all looked like you didn't know that. Like, oh, we can't buy Amazon on the Sabbath? No. But here, what we're reading in verse 26, it says, Yea, many there be that run out of their wits for women and become servants for their sake. That is what we call a simp today a simp meaning there's no extent you won't go to please that woman to appease that woman you know like when you like when uh the wife turns into like a fire breathing dragon and just won't shut up just won't stop you're willing to now break the commandment in order for her to stop what do i mean by that you're willing to lie, you're willing to twist information, or you're willing to be more hateful towards her in order for her to stop. But the scripture says no railing for railing. So you're willing to break the commandments and be simple for her sake. There's some, listen, let me tell you something. There's, there's a reason why I brought up Amazon. I ain't, that's the spirit. There's somebody in here that their wife was like, I know it's dark, but it's only been dark for 10 minutes. Just go ahead and order it. I, listen, I, there's no, I wasn't even thinking about Amazon. There's, there's a reason why that came up. Guess what? You are a simp. 
Everybody understand that? Okay. All right. Continue to read. So when it says, and become servants for their sakes, because a lot of times, when we read the history about Ahab and Jezebel, Ahab was led by Jezebel. The things Jezebel did by killing the prophets, Ahab was fully aware of it. He was the king. How would that not be made known to him that she was uh, ordering the, 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 the murder of the prophets? So you become servants to these women because of your admiration and because of sometimes what they have on you. Some of you are going to leave because you would rather leave than have what she has on you come out. It never fails. It never fails. So basically, I'm going to give you an example. I remember one time my wife says to me, she goes, you know what, my Lord, <clears throat> you know what, my Lord, I don't know what your fears are. I, I sat there, I looked at her, and you never will. That was the end of that discussion. Don't give a woman dominion over you. Guess what? If you scared of spiders, let you be the only one know you scared of spiders. Because when she get mad at you, she's going to throw a plastic one on you in your sleep. And you're going to piss the bed. And then she's going to call you pissy pants going forward. You, you, you become a captain, now you captain pissy pants. What the hell? Now we all wonder why she called you pissy pants. We don't know. Because you told her you scared of spiders. Ain't none of your damn business what I'm scared of. None of your business between me and God. You will never know. We've been married for over 20 years. She's still, and she told me, this may be like a year ago she said that. I don't know what your fears are. And you never will, woman. Never, ever, ever. Never. <sighs> because that's a way of giving her dominion over you. I'm telling you, the more they have on you, that's how women are very calculated, extremely calculated, to the point where I scratch my head oftentimes. Extremely calculated. So I'm not saying her asking you certain things is evil, but if the devil jump on her, whew, there's some things you don't want her to know. Mm-mm, mm-mm. Let's, I ain't going, I'm going to get graphic now. I'm going to leave it alone. <sighs> Go ahead. Many also have. Hey, some, some sisters going, it's going to be an uncomfortable ride home. I'm telling y'all. You don't want to tell me anything. You're going to listen to him. Now I'm going to turn to him. You want to listen to him? I know. Don't worry, I could call me tomorrow and tell me. Go ahead, Kev. Him said. <laughs> Him downstairs. I just wanted to say what Cap is touching on was heavy because I read the story about Malcolm X this week. Mm. That his wife has something over him. And he had issues in the bedroom. Mm. So what she did was she went to, what was the name, Elijah, what, the one that was over them. Mm -hmm. She went and told him. And so what happened was Malcolm said, this may come out. And he said, it's going to hurt you and it's going to hurt me. But he still kept teaching. Right, right, right. Mm -hmm. And the, the matter of it, it ended up selling, or the letter that she wrote to him ended up selling for like $95,000 or something like that. I was just trying to touch on it. That's what it was. Oh, that's, she had something over him. That's the point. That's, damn. That's heavy. That's heavy. All praise. Hey, I, hey, I didn't even know that, man. I might be something like a prophet. I don't know. Maybe a little bit. Just give me a little bit, Lord. That's all I ask. Go ahead. Many also have perished, have erred. That's the point. Many have erred. So remember, that, remember I mentioned the Amazon thing, whatever the case may be. Many have erred. Many have been in error for a woman. So you, you will misjudge matters in the congregation. You will mishandle things in the congregation. Because there's been, you know, there's been brothers who have um, stolen before. You were in charge of finances, but you stole. Who do you think they're stealing for? Themselves? It says, has, we read earlier, has robbed and toiled all to bring back to his love. Guess what? The one who knows you're stealing is the one you're laying in bed with. 
and she knows she's reaping those benefits. Y'all understand that, right? When a drug dealer sells all those drugs, buys the fancy cars, buys the jewelry, you think he's doing it because he's going to stay at home and look in the mirror at himself? He's doing it to attract the women. Am I right or wrong? Come on, help me out. Help me help you. Go ahead. Many also have perished, have erred, and sinned for women. Mm -hmm. And now do ye not believe me? Is not the king great in his power? Do not all regions fear to touch him? Yet did I see him and Apame, the king's concubine, the daughter of the admirable Bartakus, sitting at the right hand of the king and taking the crown from the king's head. So now, he's not just talking solely from wisdom, but he's now talking from experience, which is also a teacher of wisdom. Everybody understand that? Sometimes just someone's observation, just observing someone, their mannerisms, the way they speak, the way they, uh, the way they deal with others can really, is a telltale, is a telltale sign of how that person, those people really are. I, I say this all the time. When someone shows you who they are, believe it. That's, that's all I'm going to say. Believe it. Don't try to make them into something that you think they are, but believe who they showed you they are. And I, and I, and I, and I said this um, as I talked to single brothers who are proving. I'm going to say this to you brothers right now. Don't be, for single brothers, don't be horrible at proving. It's only to your detriment. She's going to show you signs. She's going to show you who she really is. My advice to you is to believe it. Y'all understand that? Don't make her into something else. She's showing you who she is. Make sense? So don't say, oh, she's beautiful. No, she didn't mean it like that. You know, you're taking it. You're looking too deep into it. Brother, she just showed you who she was. It is your job to now say, I'm going to deal with it this way or I'm going to step away. One of two things. But don't make it into something else. Don't make her into something else. Because what you're doing is hiding the wind. Y'all understand that, right? How many of y'all single? Raise your hand. Got a lot of single brothers here, man. You single, bro? You scared to raise your hand? You all right? All right. <laughs> so when a sister, when you decide to get married in the future, and all of you should be married, and I see some of y'all, a lot of y'all black shirts, it should be a sister in the truth. All right? Stay away from the strip clubs. All right? I'm saying it for a reason. Brothers drive by, that should be looking over there in the parking lot, see if any of them coming out. Mm. Next week, they drive by slower. Mm. Next week, they stay park. The week after that, they want to stand in the parking lot. Week after that, they want to go inside and see what it's like. Yeah. Hey, I'm going to tell you a story. True story. Some of y'all came for uh, Freak Nick when we, when we taught at Freak Nick and started pouring. So there's a brother in the body who he has a business of booting cars. We have brought this out before. He boots cars. So after the Sabbath, he leaves. He goes to work. A lot of the clubs, he were parked illegally. So he boots a lot, of, a lot of cars in club parking lots and around clubs, right? That's what he does. So one of the cars he boots, maybe he's, as he's booting other cars, a brother runs up to him and says, hey, man, that's my car you just booted. So as he turns around, the brother looks very familiar. But it's in the club parking lot. Like, it was an area they weren't supposed to park. So he scratches his head. Why is your car here in the club parking lot? Oh, I was inside. I only went in for a minute. I dropped off my coworker, And I was inside talking to her and her friends, trying to get them the truth. Ask me where was his fringes. Didn't have them on. 
So he said, hey, so where's, where's your fringes, bro? Oh, oh, I just moved, and I just grabbed a shirt out the box. So wait a minute. Out of all the shirts you have with fringes on them, the one shirt you grab is the one without fringes, and you just so happen to be up in the club doing the Lord's work. You, you, so when I say these, and I'm not saying it just to say it. I'm saying it because it's true. These are things that actually have happened. So all I can do is warn brothers. All I can do is warn sisters because these things really do happen. We know what we think. We think we're going to stay in the spirit 24 hours a day, seven days a week. You're going to fall out the spirit sometimes. Yeah, it's going to, yeah. I know it's hard to believe. Sometimes it's going to be your wife that pulls you out the spirit. How is that? Because now you're railing for railing. Again, now you're saying evil things. Now you kick her down the stairs. You came out the spirit. Y'all understand how easy that can happen? Okay. All right. Now don't, don't look surprised now. Brother was looking at me like, no, I ain't never going to come out the spirit. <laughs> Let me tell you something. There's a brother. I remember there's a brother who said that to Deacon Malachi. Deacon Malachi corrected him. He said, you know what? I'm going to be in the truth longer than you. And that's when Deacon was a captain at the time. He wasn't a deacon yet. And Deacon was like, okay, all praises to the Lord. He didn't, he didn't make it a big deal. That brother was gone like two months later. So don't puff yourself up as if you can't come out the spirit. I'm telling you, because Satan really going to put you to the test. Say, oh, yeah, you missed a strong man. I got something for your ass. Job 2.0. And we'll see. We'll see if his brothers and sisters are strong as Job. Most likely not. Continue to read. What verse you in? Verse 30. Come on. And taking the crown from the king's head and setting it upon her own head. So now the history he's talking about is right here. Go ahead. She also struck the king with her left hand. Damn, she popped. Whatever. And this is a king that can say off with her head. Bring me 20 more women. At, just like that. And they bring 20 more women. But he took it. Go ahead. And yet, for all this, the king gaped and gazed upon her with open mouth. If she gazed and laughed upon him. Oh, I lost my spot. With open mouth. If she laughed upon him, he laughed also. But if she took any displeasure at him, the king was fain to flatter that she might be reconciled to him again. So now, imagine this. The woman pokes fun at you for whatever reason. She's like, ah, ha, ha. Look at your big old feet. Ah, and you like, ha, 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 ha. And you laughing with her. You simple as hell. You don't laugh at no daggone insults. You look crazy. Half crazy. Or full crazy. I don't know. Well, it depends on whatever order you make. Half or full. Don't be crazy. The insults, you deal with it. It ain't funny. Go ahead. Oh, ye men. How can it be but women should be strong, seeing they do thus? Then the king and the princes looked one upon another. So he began to speak of the truth. O ye men, are not women strong? So now, you know what this kind of tells me? That there are some brothers who have always been simps, and there are some who turn to simps because they met that woman that they thought was unattainable. She's out of your league. She's out of your league, and you become a simp for her in order to win her back. That's what it says, in order to him to be reconciled again. That's all he wants is to be in her good graces again. So you become a simp. Go ahead. O ye men, are not women strong? Great is the earth, high is the heaven, swift is the sun in his course. Mm -hmm. For he compasseth the heavens round about, and fetches his course again to his own place in one day. Is he not great that maketh these things? Therefore great is the truth, and stronger than all things. It says, therefore great is the truth, and stronger than all things. Because is what he mentioned about the women a lie? Is it a lie? No, it's not. We gave examples. Sisters have the ability to do certain things to men. And have men run out of their wits. Sisters have the ability 
to have hatred for someone and the husband begins to hate that same person because they have an issue with the wife. Does that make sense? Do you have the issue with that person? No, you don't. So how does her issue become your issue? Because they have the dominion over you. When they start talking about an issue with somebody else, tell them to go deal with it. Period. Because that, go, that seeps into your spirit. Y'all understand that? It seeps into your spirit. So the issue that she has is now your issue. Should not be so. At all. Sisters, y'all understand that? Four of y'all. Sisters, y'all understand that? We got ten. Sisters, y'all understand that? All right. All praises to the Lord. God is good. Go ahead. All the earth calleth upon the truth, and the heaven blesseth it. All works shake and tremble at it, and with it is no unrighteous thing. Mm -hmm. Wine is wicked. The king is wicked. Women are wicked. All the children of men are wicked, and such are all their wicked works. And there is no truth in them. Hmm. In their unrighteousness also they shall perish. This is very important. Read that last line again. In their unrighteousness also they shall perish. This is very, very important. The top says wine is wicked. The king is wicked. Women are wicked. All the children of men are wicked. Guess what? This is what I mentioned. You're not always going to stay in the spirit. <laughs> we, listen, we, some of us have an evil thoughts right now. But guess what? You have to repent from that. Because if you stay in that spirit, you're going to perish. Make sense? You're going to perish. There's no two ways about it. Sometimes before the perishing happens, you get exposed. As it says in Sirach chapter 1, you're brought down before the whole congregation. You're embarrassed. You're made ashamed. Or sometimes the Lord just take you out. Take you out the truth or take you out of life from the land of the living, as the scripture says. Go ahead. As for the truth, it endureth and is always strong. It liveth and conquereth forevermore. So it says the truth is always going to conquer. So guess what? As I mentioned earlier, don't make someone into something else. When you deal with the truth, that is how you're going to conquer it. Y'all understand that? When you, when you actually turn someone into something else, unwillingly, right? You're covering up who they really are. And you shouldn't do that. You shouldn't do that. You have to expose who they really are. Because that's when Satan will flee. Let me tell you something, brothers. Let me I'm going to tell you. I'm going to share something with y'all. <clears throat> Do you know sometimes why sisters go crazy in the household? I want, some, I want some hands. Tell me why are some reasons sisters will continually go crazy in the household. We got a mic out there? Please. Thank you. Man, I got a lot more. I only got about 15 minutes. Boom. We're going to get it. Right here in the front. Right here in the front. Come on. Shalom. Um, low finances. Shalom. Uh, low finances. That's one of the reasons. Now, I mentioned... They continually are going off in the house. Continually. Are his finances always low? Nah. No. So that's, I mean, that's, that's, a, that's a root for an argument or trouble in the flesh. Yeah. But constantly. What are one of the reasons why a sister would just always be going left? Anybody? Anything else? Because you keep it a secret. You won't, you won't tell anybody. So they go crazy in the household because you hold it all in. Proverbs 27, 16. I wasn't going to go there, but I quoted it earlier. It's the book of Proverbs, 
chapter 27 and verse 16. Whosoever hideth her, hideth the wind. Whosoever hides the fact or the truth about her is like hiding the wind. If you hide her, you're hiding the wind. Can you actually hide wind? No. That's when the fire-breathing dragon kicks down the door and is now being exposed in the congregation. Read that again. Whosoever hideth her, hideth the wind, and the ointment of his right hand, which bereath him. Itself. So the, uh, the ointment of his right hand is going to be at odds with him. It's going to be at odds with him. <sighs> but remember what we read earlier. It's supposed to bring glory to him, right? The wife, the woman is supposed to bring glory to him. Not bring shame, not to bereave him. No, 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 no. Let's go back to First Ezra. It's the book of First Ezra, chapter four, verse thirty-eight. As for the as for the truth, it endureth and is always strong; it liveth and conquereth forevermore. With her, there is no accepting of persons or rewards, but she doeth the things that are just. And refraineth from all unjust and wicked things. So now, brothers, it is your job to fulfill verse 39. <laughs> Am I right or wrong? It is your job to fulfill verse 39. Read verse 39 again. With her, there is no accepting of persons or rewards. You know how you know how sisters get over on husbands sometimes? They give you a little bit of that thing. -wee. The brother forget all the evil because he got a little cookie and nookie. Got cookie and nookie. The brother forget all the evil. Brother say, whew, she made it all go away. No, 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 no. You're taking a reward now. Y'all understand that? Now, that is due benevolence. It's something due to you. But sometimes sisters will hold that thing hostage and give it to you like a treat. Remember you used to get a, a wicked, wicked birthday gift? Act like it's a Parim gift. You get it once a year. And you're just happy. Just You come out in your drawers and cowboy boots and just a giddy up in. Just happy. To do what? To forget that 364 other days it was denied. So now you're happy for that little bit of reward? You're able to forget all the evil? You better fulfill verse 39. Read it again. With her, there is no accepting of persons or rewards, but she doeth the things that are just and refraineth from all unjust and wicked things. Mm -hmm. And all men do well like of her works. So all, do men, all men do well like of her works your job is to do well as it's describing in verse 38 and verse 39 the truth is going to conquer forevermore if you want to have satan leave your house you both must be truthful don't don't make each other out into something that they're not no don't because you're deceiving yourself and Satan has a perfect place to dwell because you got two liars and two uh, 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 make believers. Y'all making up, y'all making characters like it's damn, uh, what's that, 2K or Madden or something. Y'all making people, making some stuff that's not there. What you see is what you get. But both of you should be working to not be evil towards each other, to not be railing for railing. Y'all understand that? Two brothers, no sisters understood that. Do y'all understand that? Yes, sir. All right. Help me, Lord. Read. Neither in her judgment is any unrighteousness. So neither in the judgment between you two should there be any unrighteousness. It shouldn't be dealing with a matter in order to get your way or to win your side. No, your job is to win one another over. And only, you're not going to do that by being deceitful. 
You're not going to do that by ignoring things as if it's not there. You're going to do it by being truthful in the Lord. Makes sense, right? Keep reading. And she is the strength, kingdom, power, and majesty of all ages. Damn. Of what? Of all ages. So you're telling me young couples and older couples can benefit from this? Who would have thought? For all ages, all time and all ages, literally, both young and old. So if you are a 21-year-old married couple or you are a 65-year-old couple, this is going to benefit you because it stands the test of time. The word of God is true. We're a bunch of liars. Go ahead. Blessed be the God of truth. And with that, he held his peace. What and verse are you at? Verse 41. 41. Go ahead. And with that, he held his peace. And all the people then shouted and said, Great is truth and mighty above all things. Then said the king unto him, Ask what thou wilt more than is appointed in the writing, and we will give it thee, because thou art found wisest, and thou shalt sit next me, and shalt be called my cousin. Then said he unto the king, Remember thy vow, which thou hast vowed to build Jerusalem. And in the day when thou camest to thy kingdom. Now, let me, sh let me show y'all something. When you deal with truth, you're not a respective person. You're not easily taken by reward, right? You can keep your mind on your nation. Y'all understand that? When you deal in that manner, you can be nation-minded. Because Zerubbabel is to it's being told he's going to get all these gifts and benefits as the second or uh, one or uh, the king's cousin he's gonna sit in a prominent position now he could say man i could have all those women i just described now but he said no 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 there's a greater mission i have to help get my nation back on track everything that darius promised he reminded him on how to rebuild or uh, give him the liberty this is during the time of ezra and nehemiah give him the liberty to go back and rebuild the doors and walls in Jerusalem. He never forgot the mission. But you know what will happen with a lot of brothers? You'll argue so much. And sisters will make so many excuses about staying home on the Sabbath. The Sabbath will actually become grievous to you too. The Sabbath, because what? Because you argued all morning on the Sabbath. Now you don't feel like coming to the Sabbath either. No, 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 no. You keeping the Sabbath of the Lord is helping to build our nation. Y'all understand that? That's helping to build our nation. So what it does is you have to be as Zerubbabel was. Though he has many uh, gifts and benefits coming his way, though he has a prominent position, he says, you know what? I can't forget what the ultimate mission is. It's the rebuilding of the 12 tribes of Israel. So don't let a wife, don't let a father, a mother, anyone rest, uh, uh, restrict you from building up your nation. Nobody. I don't care if she's in the bed next to you. Sister, same thing. I don't care if he's laying in the bed next to you. Don't ever forget the mission. Ever. Does everybody understand that? Yes, sir. Proverbs 14 and 1. Oh, keep reading, matter of fact. Keep reading first. Verse 45. Thou also hast vowed to build up the temple, mm -hmm. which the Edomites burned when Judea was made desolate by the Chaldees. Right. Okay, now, Proverbs 14 and 1. It's the book of Proverbs, chapter 14 and verse 1. Every wise woman, some wise women, every wise woman mm -hmm. buildeth her house. Hmm. So now let me say this. Your house is a portion of the nation. Everybody understand that? Each household is a pin in the nation. You, you ever look at a map and you put a pinpoint? Every house, every one of your houses is a part of building that nation. So what does it say? A wise woman will what? Every wise woman buildeth her house. Mm -hmm. 
but the foolish plucketh it down with her hands. <sighs> so that's just as I mentioned with the brothers. Some of us are going to be at that crossroad where the choice is going to be made. Am I going to be focused on my nation or am I going to be focused on myself and only my household? Me, 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 me. That's the choice that's going to be made, right? It's the same thing with sisters. The sisters are going to have to ask, am I going to focus on building my house or destroying my house? Sisters, y'all understand that? All right. All right. Read that again. The book of Proverbs, chapter 14 and verse 1. Mm -hmm. Every wise woman buildeth her house, but the foolish plucketh it down with her hands. Let's go to Ecclesiasticus 40, verse 19. Sirach 40, verse 19. This is the book of Sirach, chapter 40 and verse 19. Come on. Children and the building of a city continue a man's name, but a blameless wife is counted above them both. Damn. So now, the children who carry the memorial and the name of the father, right? So your name remains in the earth, correct? And it says the building of a city, like for instance, uh, the city of Atlanta, right? Is named after one of the former governor's daughters. He named that city, correct? Now, many places are named after these Edomites, right? America, it, it's, it's all named after them. So that every time you, and even our, some of our last names carry the memorial of your slave master, it's actually allowing his name to always be remembered in the earth. So if your name is Jackson, Johnson, Jenkins, whatever, you are carrying on your slave master's memorial. Got quiet, huh? Okay. A lot of Jacksons and Johnson. I might have said somebody's last name in here. I know, I know there's one Jenkins. Can I get one? Can I get one? Yeah, you got one. <laughs> oh, there is a Jenkins. <laughs> there's always a Jenkins. That's a Jake name for you. But guess what? Jenkins or whatever it is, is carrying on the memorial of he who was the original Jenkins, correct? But here, it says a blameless wife is above that. I want you to think about the weightiness of what was just what we just read, a blameless wife, meaning you're not blamed in the household or in the congregation. Do y'all understand that? And that goes with the help of you brothers. In order for her to get a blameless name, you have to guide her. Make sense? And you do that through your example. You must be that example. First of it, first of all, don't hide the wind like we just read. Read that again. The book of Sirach, chapter 40, verse 19. Children and the building of a city continue a man's name, mm -hmm. but a blameless wife is counted above them both. So which one of you sisters want to have a blameless name in Israel? Raise your hand. Okay. I'm going to ask this. What is that going to take? Say that again, sister work it's going to take work so a lot of us we spend a lot of time learning recipes for unleavened bread right Ooh, right y'all make some good unleavened bread how about making head wraps turning jeans to skirts y'all spend a ton of time learning how to do that stuff correct yes how about the time you put into being blameless i guarantee that time is less i guarantee it because we do a lot of outward adorning. We want to look the part. We don't spend enough time being the part. You know, like in a play, the costume get more, more, more accolades than the actual playwright and the actors who carry out the role. You have to put more time into your role than the outward adorning. You should be ready to wear the same dress every Sabbath with fringes on just to keep the laws of God. But what we do, no, I got to go out and spend my next paycheck to buy all these outfits because I have to look the part. I have to be beautified. 
but I guarantee you don't spend that much time beautifying your inward self. We're backwards. We are far backwards. We're those same people who was the drug dealer who was beautifying my car, my jewelry to get the women. We're the same people. This time you're doing it with fringes. Get your inside right. Get your mind right. Get your spirit right. Be willing to wear the same outfit every week. Spend less time on beautifying the outside and spend more on the in. Our priorities have to be set in order. Now, here's the thing. You set it in order or we're going to set it in order for you. And if we do it, because we're trying to do it before the most high do it. If we do it, you're not going to like it. Y'all understand that? Give me that in, um, before we read this again, give me that in Sirach, I think it's 21 and 1 or 20 and 1. Let me look at it. Yep. Um, yes, 20 and 1. It's the book of Sirach, chapter 20 and verse 1. There is a reproof that is not comely. Again, some man holdeth his tongue and he is wise. So the top part is what I want. There's going to be a correction that's not pretty. It is not pretty at all. So what you should be doing is working on the inward part of you. You have to now start lining up. Is what I'm if me saying this, does it line up with God? I'm going to tell you all something. A prayer that I often have is I ask the Lord to give me the spirit to recognize my errors and the spirit to recognize if someone else points it out to me. Y'all understand that? Because you may not always see your error because you've been doing it for so long. You think it's normal, right? But when someone points it out to you, you have to ask for that spirit to accept what someone else just said. Because you can easily be offended by what someone just said. No, 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 no. Don't be offended. Fix it. Fix it. And here's something else. I, I, I shared it with the brothers inside. Here's something I, I've told my wife. And I, I got it from a great counselor. And I said, you know what? I'm going to implement the same thing because that makes perfect sense. He says, I, oh, I said, if your name comes up, I told her this. I said, if your name comes up in anything, in any involvement with anyone in the body, any sisters, I am automatically going to blame you. I don't care what it is, how big or how small. I am automatically going to blame you because you are without excuse. You have a counselor in the bed next to you. <laughs> what, what excuse do you have? If there's a matter that come up with you and a sister, right, and you are unsure how to do, you don't have to tell me the details. You can just ask, hey, how, how should I deal with a situation about this, that? And you can make it very vague. You have a counselor in the bed next to you. What excuse can you possibly have? Makes sense, right? So I'm automatically going to blame my wife. I don't need to hear the other side. I don't care. I don't even care. As long as you've been in the truth, I don't care. Because it should never get to the point where it's a problem. Y'all understand that? Govern your houses, man. Go to Sirach 25. We're almost done. Just a couple more minutes. Sirach 25, because I want to give everybody a chance to take a quick break before Bishop class starts in approximately 25 minutes. Let's go to a couple more scriptures. Sirach 25, 17. It's the book of Sirach, chapter 25. Hey, and don't be afraid to have that uncomfortable feeling in your house. Some of y'all won't say anything because you, you don't want to hear the argument. You don't want to hear this. You don't want to hear that. You want to be uncomfortable. Guess what? In order to get the kingdom, you're going to have to be uncomfortable. You're going to have to go through it. Listen, the day of the weak man is over. The day of the weak man is over. None of you men should be weak to your wives. 
Y'all yeah, brother's crazy. <laughs> Sirach 25, verse 17. The book of Sirach, chapter 25, verse 17. The wickedness of a woman changeth her face and darkeneth her countenance like sackcloth. Her husband shall sit among his neighbors, and when he heareth it, shall sigh bitterly. Now, I'm going to say something, sisters. As you work on yourself, work on making sure this isn't you. The same way the Lord gives us a blueprint on how we're to deal with one another, how we are to be, he also tells you or gives you an outline of what you should not be. So this is how we gauge our conversation. This is how we gauge how we treat one another, how we treat our children, because it's all written here in the scriptures, right? You know if your husband has a heavy countenance because you know if your name is always coming up. Make sense? So then what, you, what should you do? Work on defending yourself or work on making sure he doesn't get that heavy countenance again? Which one? First or second? The second. It's that simple. Now, I'm going to give y'all a deep, 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 deep bit of understanding right now. How many of you sisters want a happy household? Right? I'm about to give you a deep breakdown. Y'all got your pens? I'm going to tell you how to do it. Got your pens? Paper? You got it? You got it? You ready? Humble down to your husband. Oh, y'all thought y'all was gonna get a long breakdown? Ten scriptures? No. If you want a peaceful and happy home, humble down to your husband. Brothers, am I right? Is there anything deeper than that? Pretty simple. Because that will bring peace into the house. When he tells you, hey, do this, do that, and a third, okay. Yes, my Lord. Wh whichever it is, just do it. It's that simple. Because the minute you say, but I thought that his whole spirit is going to change now. Am I correct or am I right? That's, it's that simple. So I'm, is the, camera, the camera's on? I'm going to give it again in case y'all missed it. Here's a deep breakdown. Sisters, if you want to have a happy, healthy home and marriage, humble down to your husband. That's it. And I'm going to end it there. With that, shalom. We used to scream black power while Haram was pushed but at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone, 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.